Click the link below for a 30 day free trial of Audible. Yo! So it has been about two months since Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 has come to a close. And apparently Season 3 has already been announced, possibly in production. I believe that they're probably going to aim for an early 2025 release date to maybe mid-2025. It depends. And it is safe to say that Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 was absolutely a financial success. I believe it was reported out that it was over 9 million viewers were watching on Crunchyroll with each new release. Now, obviously, this doesn't take into account unofficial websites and a lot of things of that nature, but this is still a crazy good turnout for this series. And as we all know, Jujutsu Kaisen, even in the manga sphere, is doing extremely well, selling over 90 million copies in circulation at the moment. And most likely, the next volume, the cover with Gojo on it, is probably going to be the highest sales the series has ever seen for obvious reasons. I'm gonna try to keep this relatively spoiler free because I know a lot of people are gonna be coming from the anime or to this video, but just so you know that Jujutsu Kaisen is still my favorite running shonen at this current moment. No, it's not One Piece. It will never be One Piece. And uh, just so you know, if you ever talk about One Piece on my channel, there's a pretty big possibility that you might get banned. So just heads up. <laughs> Real quick pause on this video. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a question for you. Are you looking for something fashionable and affordable to wear anime related these days? Are you looking for an anime inspired t-shirt, a hoodie, a hat, or even like lights or anything of that nature? Well, boy, I tell you, head on over to AnimeExpressStore.com and oh yeah, they'll hook you up over there. Go ahead at your next checkout, hit code DAFFY10 for 10% off your next Purchase, man. Oh, yeah, we sponsored now. So I can curse in this bitch. Yeah! Remember, Daffy10, D A F F Y 10 for 10% off of your next purchase, man. But today I wanted to sit down and discuss something that I sat and thought about for a pretty long time because I honestly think that Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 was notably stronger than the first season and not to say that the first season was weak by any means but i definitely got to say that there are certain things actually a lot of different things that i felt like jutsu kaisen season two did better than season one and there are some things that also did not do as well as season one so we're gonna go over the entire video breaking my thoughts down on this but i definitely feel that what made jutsu kaisen season two notably stronger than season one was the direction not anything specifically with the animation or the art style changes or anything like that but i felt as if it was an all-encompassing change it felt like this was an entirely different machine in season one and i absolutely loved it so for Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1 and Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 0, the movie, the director was Sung Hoo Park. Then transitioning over to Season 2, the director was Shoto Gosho Ozo. Go, go, Gosho Zono, excuse me. I think my weeb status needs to be revoked. I can't even say the simple name. Ugh. Need to hop back in that Duolingo ting. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow ah! Now, I know a lot of people in the JJK community were not fans of the art style change. Uh, and, and really, the style change wasn't super apparent from the character sheets. I mean, strictly speaking from the character sheets, a lot of details got kind of ironed out. But honestly, it was for the better. If you know anything about animation, you know that when you start getting to like really, really, really intricate details, it becomes harder and harder to animate. That's why Dragon Ball Super Broly went with the Shintani art style, and specifically, Shintani's art style was way easier to create and animate, is because there weren't all these different refined little pieces. Certain things like shading and certain scenes being removed entirely in favor of more fluid animation. A lot of casual people don't understand this, but for those that have been in the anime uh, and manga sphere for a while, these are small things that you can appreciate. Now, let me get this out of the way. Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1 was a beast when it came to animation. Uh, specifically, one that speaks out to me is when Yuji and Toto were fighting Hanami, and you have that scene where, where Hanami makes that big-ass tree appear, and then Yuji and Toto are kind of just, like, uh, running along it, and then you have, like, the music swelling up, like, the you know what I mean? And I'll talk about music here later on, uh, because I feel like that was a notable improvement as well. But the art style change lends 
a lot to different scenes here specifically. Now, I will tell you that I'm actually a huge fan of this because, and I talked about this briefly uh, with Demon Slayer, but I really don't like when anime strictly stick to one art style. So obviously you'll see this a lot more with different studios when you have all hands under the same roof, like it, almost in an umbrella style where everyone's on the same page, everyone is sticking strictly to this sheet, da 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 da. Right, similar to Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer are the characters in every animation, they're always on model, unless you have certain scenes where something needs to be exaggerated either for comedic effect or uh, something for, you know, uh, like a climax of a fight, such as the end Tanjiro and everybody else versus Daki or at the end of the last season when Tanjiro was cutting the emotion demon's head off. But other than that, in Jujutsu Kaisen Season 1, there wasn't a whole lot of squash and stretch, kind of like in video games. We see in Season 2 that it's all over the place, and it looks absolutely gorgeous, front to back. This is why direction is so important, because when it comes to direction, the director themselves oversee how the storyboards go. They just want to see how the music's going to go and how all these different things are going to play, even the voice direction. Now, obviously, they're not one man armies. They do hire different people on. But generally speaking, they oversee a lot of it. So, for example, you can take Yuji versus Kechizu, right? And we have that scene where Yuji is actually just beating down Kechizu. And his character model, for the most part, looks the same. But when we transition over to Yuji versus Mahito in season two, we have that brief flash of Ichidori where his eyes are like glowing red and this is like super hard, almost brushstroke style on his model before he starts to punch Mahito. We get this little bit of slowdown and we see this like squash and stretch with these streaks of punches that he's landing on Mahito. It looks gorgeous, absolutely phenomenal. And we don't see his hand individually until he's done punching, but it gives a sense of speed. Now you compare this directly to with Yuji's fight versus the Grasshopper Curse, that was more of a season one fight where you can see like each individual punch that Yuji is throwing for the most part when they have their little aura battle. Or even take example, when Toji is charging at Gojo, like for the shot that we saw in the trailer and it, the ground is just like shifting a whole bunch and Toji's kind of just like, it kind of just like a blur for a second, right? Now, obviously, the animators were under extreme duress during this time. I genuinely hope people don't forget this whole fiasco. The Internet has a very short memory. Um, I'm hoping going into season three that there is massive change and a big turnaround, but I, I, I doubt it. Apparently, season one had similar issues. Volume zero was allegedly made in six months and people were still getting hired on as freelancers days before the episodes are coming to air. So I really don't know. It might be a little better because we have Chainsaw Man as a movie coming out, I believe later on this year, but I it, I, I don't really know. Vinland Saga season three is probably not gonna be in development for another two years. So we will see. And then obviously there's way more projects that Mappa takes on, but just as an example. I mean, even strictly talking about animation, look at Sukuna's fight versus Jogo. Obviously, this is in uh, arguably top 10 yeah. fights for anime this year. Uh, and when I say this year, I mean 2023. Uh, we look and look how many different faces Sukuna has during that fight. We have that first shot uh, where Sukuna is laughing and he gets close to the ca camera. He just absolutely looks absolutely diabolical. He's laughing. Then we have another one where he has kind of like that troll face before he knocks Jogo into the building. <laughs> looks horrifying. Then we have another one where before Sukuna cuts off Jogo's arms, he charges at him and we have that like demon, like skull face, whatever like that. Those are like three distinctly different faces that Sukuna has here looks great right and people actually pointed this out too but that mark on Sukuna's forehead depending on the shot looks totally different you have one shot where Sukuna is looking at Jogo's meteor right before he fires it and he's smiling they have another where like I said he's up close and personal in his face and he's laughing and it looks totally different now obviously some people could like make a little like Mr. Beast title like whoa what's going on is Sukuna using technique why is it different here and it's just it's it's an animation thing it's not it's not that deep nigga oh my god did y'all see that Sukuna versus Maharaga flight in Blu-ray. <laughs> Even look at the Maharaga fight. Now, a lot of people with the Maharaga fight, they did get kind of lost. 
Um, obviously, I love this fight. I mean, Maharaga swimming through a building is absolutely hilarious. And Maharaga growing gills is actually something that I didn't really think about. I mean, adapting to water, it's a cool concept. But we have specifically that shot of Maharaga using a train like nunchucks. <laughs> Looks sick. Absolutely crazy. But we've never seen Maharaga actually grow in size like that. I mean, it makes sense. I don't really see why it couldn't do it. I mean, it's a Shikigami. Sure, man, whatever. I mean, hypothetically, if it had to fight a giant, I would assume it would have to do something similar to that. But yeah, just different things like that, right? Not always sticking to the script. Um, and specifically, Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 did certain things that I actually don't like. What I actually don't like is the fact that there are certain explanations in the manga that are completely cut out. For example, and this is super small and consequential, but it does, is a small character thing, is Yuji's manji kick was totally cut. They usually did it, but the explanation for the manji kick was just totally gone. It was absent. Now, obviously, it's just a kick, right? It's one of those things that it's small and you don't have to give like a Baki level explanation for it and totally pause uh, the momentum of the episode. But something small It's like, oh, Yuji's martial arts prowess. We can never really forget that, right? That was cut and something major that was cut. Uh, was actually a pretty big issue that they did go over was Yuji's Divergent Fist. I don't believe that Yuji's Divergent Fist was mentioned one time in season two. Now, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm going to on the table. A lot of the anime onlys are fucking stupid. But you also do have a lot of people who they just did not remember Yuji's training with Divergent Fist and that whole arc of the versus Mahito arc. People just did not remember. So it's a bit frustrating when you have the explanation in the manga where Maito attempts to open, expose his, I believe it was his left side for Yuji to target it directly so he could get, you know, get that blade off and possibly cut his head off. And then Yuji hits him with a divergent fist, offsets him, and people are just confused, like a double time lag, a double impact. Same thing happened with the Chozo fight. When Chozo and Yuji directly bump fists and the camera blacks out for a second and Chozo's like backing up, people weren't catching that that, that Yuji used divergent fist there. Now I knew that and other manga readers knew that, but people just did not know they were anime only. So it definitely would have helped for divergent fist to even be shown in a flashback or something like that. Just some of these small explanations we're just not there mysteriously. I have no idea why. Now, also, you do have some things that weren't in the manga, like like Nabito's projection sorcery. I believe that projection sorcery was dove into more with Noya later on. But from my memory, I do not believe that Nabito's projection sorcery was was explained to that level of depth initially in the Shibuya incident. And before I transition over to the music aspect, I just the the lighting, <laughs> the lighting and the composition of these shots is so good, man. I love every single one. Obviously, y'all know my favorite fight and one of my favorite fights in Jutsu Kaisen was Chozo versus Yuji, and they did an absolutely immaculate job with this fight man the constant sound of the water coming down over yuji and choso we have the lighting which is absolutely gorgeous the red and the blue hue we have the pov shots of yuji going through the stall kicking choso just all these different things i love the addition of choso having those like two like wolverine claws and trying to swipe at yuji i love the choreography here man I even it's it's funny because there's a shot where you just see yuji and choso's feet as they're trying to you know obviously scrap they're trying to squabble they're trying to brawl right and you don't even see their hands but you just see their feet and how they're moving i love the choreography there man it gives us as an audience a chance to use our imagination okay what kind of moves are they using here right sorry i just had to quickly nerd out about that but i want to transition over to the music here now i i really do like the music in in, in season one obviously we have the uh, i believe it was your fight is my fight or you know the da -na 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 -na. But I do think that overall, I actually did like the music in this season a lot more than the previous one. Even the song that plays when Gojo is, you know, uh, using Hollow Purple for the first time, that was really good. I love the track that played when Rico was, you know, talking about her past life and and her goals and admirations and I, I really enjoyed that one but specifically the one that really that really really hit for me were, were two there was the track that played when yuji was beating mahito i believe it's called nobaras or kugasaki's 
Let me just see if I can find it. I'm sorry. It's called Jujutsu Sorcerer Nobara Kugasaki. Uh, it's 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 somber, it's mellow, but also it's got like this gleam of hope inside of the track when Yuji's like, you know, desperately trying to exercise Mahito when while yes, he is sad that Nanami died, he still <laughs> at the time is elated that he has an ally that's in his corner that has his back no matter how many awful things are going on currently i love that track we have to talk about we have to talk about malevolent shrine and maharaga's track oh my god the the metal and the guitars on maharaga's track oh my god Dude, Thunderclap is absolutely probably one of my favorite OSTs, as well as Malevolent Shrine. Malevolent Shrine just sounds divine. It, it sounds, it, it has almost this, this gothic, supernatural, outer world feel to it with the choir. And the choir sounds like, almost like they're screaming in agony. It, it sounds so demented. I absolutely love it. But I will say my personal favorite track from this new list is actually entrusted or what was entrusted to me now this is the track that plays when muji actually lands the black flash on mahito defeating him and i love how this song goes it's not your typical like victory music like but for me this feels very similar to almost to you say run in the fact that it's got this almost dire feel to it initially and then we have this small pause and then Obviously, in the anime, when the black flash focuses on the screen and it expands, we have just this tremendous just crash, this crescendo of just success, and it feels like a sense of relief, like we finally earned this. It feels like this is just power packed into this punch. I absolutely adore this track. I've actually been playing it nonstop in my car on my way to work. <laughs> absolutely adore this track, man. I, 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 I can't praise it enough. And overall, just like small additions to the Jujutsu Kaisen like choreography and and small things like Geto using like the little spirit gun or them actually fighting inside of like the area that Tengen was holding held in like that the, those little like houses and and all that. They didn't necessarily have to do that, but it was really cool. And also, I just love the way everything looked. They made Toji, no matter how overrated Toji is in the Jujutsu Kaisen fandom, they made Toji look absolutely <laughs> diabolical, made him look so cool. Obviously, we have the rabbits trying to sneak Toji, trying to, the, the, that one rabbit that tried to kick Toji in the face, and another one trying to sneak him with the pipe. Like, they, th th those things they didn't have to put in there, uh, but they just, they, they add so much to the anime that's what anime is for it's to build upon what the manga did it's trying to it, it needs to enhance the experience i've already made this video long enough as it is but this is just me giving my personal thoughts on what i felt like jujutsu kaisen seasons two season two's biggest strengths were so let me know down in the comments what you guys think man i i i i absolutely love this season man season three obviously y'all know i will be there day one you know uh but i'm, I'm very curious to see i I'm, I'm hoping they stick with the same director um and sung Hoo park is directing uh ninja commonly go watch that um it's cool it's it's, it's cool it's, 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 it's all right not 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 bad but it's a little predictable but it's all right um so go check that out uh, obviously gorgeous animation on that um his choreography is uh very apparent all throughout that up and down those storyboards yeah that's got his name written all over it <laughs> So let me know down in the comments what you guys think, man. What do you guys think that Jutsu Kaisen Season 2 did better than Season 1? I'm, I'm very curious to see what you guys think. But, uh, yeah. It's me, but if you guys think you guys want to join me on this video, and remember at the end of the day, you are my special.